Hey guys, um, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally got around to it. That's a bit of a tutorial about how I get some of the cool drone shots that I use in some of the videos on the other channels uh, that I work on. So let's get straight to it. Well, if you have a drone, first of all, a little bit of regulations. You should register it with the FAA, in the, that's if you're in the US. Uh, that costs $5 to do. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. Uh, that's for hobbyist you know, users of drones, uh, non-commercial use. For commercial users, you actually have to do a little course and pass a test to get your drone pilot. And that's basically if you're um, using drones and then selling the footage, like if you're filming real estate or if you're filming weddings with a drone or whatever. Um, if you're just putting videos on YouTube, uh, I would say it kind of goes into a little bit of a gray area because obviously if YouTube ends up being your primary income Then I guess that would be commercial use But if you're just you know doing holiday if it's you know vacation videos with drones and putting that on YouTube You're not really earning much money off it then you know, I don't know I guess it could be more of a hobby thing, but all right, so those are the kind of regulations aside um, Let's now look at actual drone shooting. So the drone I use is the Mavic Pro uh, It's a great drone. I feel that this drone uh, has the best balance of sort of light you know light lightweight compactness and video quality um, now as a golden rule with um, with drone flying and also with any sort of like lands outdoor landscape photography is generally you only really want to shoot in the golden hour and the golden hour is the time uh, either sort of an hour after sunrise or an hour before sunset and that's when the light is at a sort of golden yellowy color all the colors are really nice and warm and whenever you look at photos done by professional photographers outdoors, normally they'll pick that time. Very few professional photographers, uh, you know, choose to shoot stuff in the middle of the day when the light is sort of either very harsh or very flat. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have a good look. So I would encourage you to try and shoot at that time. Uh, you can see in this shot in the UK, I'm circling around this church and you've got sort of the sun is low in the sky. It's kind of coming through the clouds in rays and it's, there's little bits of smoke and cloud around and it's really lighting them up and creating lens flares and just a very beautiful light. Um, in this shot from California, um, above Mul Mulholland Drive, which is you know in Beverly Hills where there are a lot of mansions, um, we don't really have the same effect with the sun. It wasn't, it wasn't that kind of light, but it was just before sunset. So everything has a much more sort of golden yellowy glow. Um, which is also pretty good. And then I have some shots that were shot um, at sunrise. This is in New, um, Pennsylvania or on the New Jersey, Pennsylvania border. Um, it's a sunflower farm. And so I got there, when I got there, it was a little bit cloudy. The sun hadn't really come out yet. And there was a lot of mist around. So that also is quite a good effect. Um, and then when the sun came out, it was a really beautiful golden light. And, you know, you can see how the sun is sort of reflecting through the plants and you, you really get very, very beautiful um, shots like that. So that's my first rule, um, you know, try to shoot at golden hour. Now obviously sometimes, uh, maybe due to time restrictions or whatever, it's just not convenient to do that. So there are some other tricks that you can, um, you know, have up your sleeve uh, to make your footage more interesting, especially um, if you don't have good light. Um, if you use all these tricks and you use the good light, then it's even better. But So take a look at some of these shots in Hong Kong. Um, I've tried to make it interesting. So this is obviously an overcast day uh, and it's sort of a, you know, two or three in the afternoon. It's not, you know, I didn't have golden hour or anything like that. Even if it was golden hour, it's overcast, so you're not really gonna see it. So <clears throat> I've tried to make it more interesting by having, you know, flying close to moving objects, like you can see these two ferries that are passing each other, uh, then flying past this building. Um, you know, it gives a little bit of foreground and background separation, uh, makes it a much more interesting shot. Another cool shot I like to do is sort of a reveal shot. Uh, and this is cool, you know, if you don't have great light, you can, you can uh, do this to make it a bit more exciting. Of course, if you combine it with good light, like the, sh the shot I'm gonna show you uh, in a second, um, it's just flying up over this mountain, we go past this temple, and then we reveal this city behind. Uh, this was actually shot at Golden Hour, but you know, you don't really see it that much. And it's more of the sort of coming up over the mountain and seeing the city that that gives the shot an exciting feel. 
Another great technique, which I've already showed a shot of, is the uh, sort of tracking shot where you revolve around an object. Um, <clears throat> there are automatic settings that will have the drone do it automatically, but personally I feel it's easy enough just to use the controller and, you know, use the controls to actually do it and, and go around an object. And you can see it here combined with awesome light and it really ends up looking awesome. I'll also talk about some safety here as well. So obviously, if you're flying in a city, you really don't want to be flying over city streets. You know, part of the, um, in the US, the FAA's, FAA's regulations are, you know, if you're flying as a hobbyist, you can't fly over densely populated areas, all right? So flying over a city street or over Times Square or something definitely would count as that. So if I'm flying in a city, I always try to launch from either a park or somewhere close to a river or the sea or water or whatever, um, so that I can fly over a sparsely populated area or over water. So you can see in Hong Kong, I'm flying over the harbor, um, obviously sparsely populated, just a few boats, but you know, on the surface of the water there aren't, there obviously aren't people. And you can still get really cool shots of the city whilst flying over water. Um, here's a shot from Taiwan. I actually launched from a park. Uh, you can see all the buildings. It looks like I'm in the city, and I am, but I'm actually flying over a park, which is obviously quite sparsely populated as well. Just a few people playing frisbee down there or something. I'm gonna give you a little bit more advice on the camera settings. So when I fly drones now, I always use manual settings. Um, with automatic settings, you can often get some sort of glitchiness that, you know, you know a few things that are undesirable. So first of all, I'll talk about shutter speed. Um, if you have your shutter speed set too high, you can get this sort of jerkiness. And you don't notice it when you're filming, but when you view the footage on a big screen, you'll notice there's a jerkiness. And that's caused by high shutter speeds. Um, so my advice is to always shoot on manual settings, keep your ISO or gain or whatever it's called on your drone down low so that you can have a slower shutter speed. If you're shooting a really bright light, you may need an ND filter, uh, which is like a little, little sunglasses for a camera, right? It's a little dark glass ring that you put on the front of your camera and flies up on your drone. And um, that would mean that you'd be able to use a lower shutter speed. The automatic settings on these things, they often push the shutter speed quite high. Um, you can also use the manual white balance as well. I find that the Mavic Pro doesn't always do a good job of getting a decent white balance, especially if you're in snow. And so, you know, you, you can do a manual white balance and the footage isn't raw, so you can't change the white balance afterwards. Um, that's baked in. So it's better to get a really good white balance straight away, um, etc. Another, just a little tip as well with the Mavic Pro, but this may be um, a tip for other drones too, is that sometimes the horizon can be a little bit slow to adjust. So if you've just made a turn and you may find that your horizon is a little bit crooked. And that's just that the gimbal can sometimes be a little bit slow to bring it back to horizontal. Also, if you've had a crash or perhaps you, you know, have had change in temperature, you haven't used your drone for a while, the gimbal might be a little bit off by a few degrees and you can just go through the gimbal calibration in the menu to just make sure that gimbal is calibrated so you do actually get a straight horizon. And if you don't have a straight horizon, it's not the end of the world. You can just slightly enlarge the image. You know, it's 4K, remember, so you're, you're, you know, you've got extra room to play with and then just do rotation adjustment um, just to make sure you, that your horizon is straight. I see a lot of drone footage on YouTube with crooked horizons. It's a kind of amateur. Okay, guys, well, thanks for watching. I hope those tips are helpful. Um, if I think of more stuff, maybe I'll do, you know, a part two of this. If you are interested in buying a drone, you can check out uh, the Mavic Pro. I'll put the link to it on Amazon below. Um, you know, if you do buy it, I get a little bit of commission from that. So that would be appreciated if you support our show uh, by doing that. And, you know, give this video a like. Please subscribe. Leave your comments below. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm flying Just grab my hair